Let's take a look at tech news. In this case, OBS. They have their new version out officially related to Twitch and the multi-track video streaming. Let's take a look at a few of the details. The feature currently is only available on Windows, requires an NVIDIA GTX 900 series, 10, 20 or newer, as well as the AMD RX 6000 series GPU or newer. So that's interesting. AMD 5000 series isn't, that's not good enough. What about Intel with the Arc? Anyways, I am testing it out right now and it's been working okay. Basically what this means is that you can do a stream where you do multiple encodes on your end and you push that to Twitch so that you can have multiple options for viewers. It's good for smaller streamers that don't have access to transcoding on Twitch's servers. OBS also did a few other improvements related to hybrid MP4 output, so it should be more fault tolerant and it's called fragmented MP4, their Linux version, NVENC AV1, and a few other things. Overall, it's nice to see. I think OBS is one of the most amazing pieces of software in existence. Here's a quick little look at OBS. They did update the visuals. I'm doing the live streaming net right now with multiple video encodes, and it seems to be working fine. One feature I wish they would improve on I use this to push my background music to a different track. I control audio coming from games and stuff, but it's quirky. It has static. Did a D&D stream recently where on Discord that comes in, it gets all garbly. That's not great. Hopefully they improve that feature at some point, or maybe if I upgrade my hardware, you know, hopefully at some point and go to Windows 11 instead of Windows 10, maybe it will work better. I don't see any updates. On Twitch's side of things, you can read their details of what is changing, what they're adding. It will have HEVC and AV1 eventually, but I don't think it's coming out right away compared to the multi video track stream, which is H.264 encodes but at least so far it's working for me intel cpus the 14th and 13th gen on the high end they have some pretty serious issues right now with crashing wendell has a great video on that if you want to check it out intel has a pretty big problem it says they're definitely worth watching as well as gamers nexus talked with him about it gave additional information in this video if you're considering a 14th or 13th gen high-end intel cpu probably a good idea to wait another interesting video i noticed is hardware unboxed he tested every game that he has on the intel arc gpu some interesting results Overall, it looks pretty decent for Intel in this case on their GPU side, but it's not perfect. They're still working on it. I think they've done a decent job. And if you want to check out this video, you can learn more about that. And then Tech did an interesting video on this weird power supply it has uh, an additional piece to it where the connectors come out. It's hard to tell if it would work well in practice, but you can read their review and decide for yourself. It's at the very least interesting. It's a thousand watt and it's almost 200 USD, so it's not cheap. Pretty cool though. I like that Lian Lee is doing some unique designs. The funny thing is they made the box shaped that way as well. But I mean, hey, if you're gonna go all the way, go all the way. They mentioned Realtek previews sub $100 five gigabit ethernet switches, $20 per port calculation. Assuming your cables are able to transmit this level of ethernet, you know, it's potentially an option now, which is nice. Also on Anandek, they mention another memory standard thing. We've got the CU DIMMs now, potentially. It's supposed to help with DDR5 speeds, but they're getting a little crazy with this stuff, it feels like. You have the cam modules, LP cam modules, and now this CU DIMM thing. Yeah, at the very least, it looks like the same shape as a regular DDR5 stick of memory, but it's special, I guess. They say DDR5 clocked unbuffered dual inline memory module CU DIMM specification. So if you are into reading memory specifications, check it out. I noticed that Linus Tech Tips, I haven't been the huge, the most huge fan of them these days, but they do some good work and they have started posting to their website, which is super cool. They got nice reviews. It looks clean. We got a search feature categories. So for example, click on this one here, nice photos, little description of the good and the bad and the overall information. They have a comparison bin. Let's try that out. And also these tabs on the top, which open up these tabs down here. And good amount of information. The website 
looks pretty clean. I like it. So I could see this being very useful in the future to learn about hardware and such. Detailed specifications, they give you descriptions of what it means, which is important for beginners of this type of stuff. Number of fans, fan size. So this is a piece of information that's super helpful and you won't necessarily get it from the manufacturer very easily. 88 millimeter fans. Larger fans tend to be quieter, but obviously bearing type and stuff like that are a consideration. But they do appear to have a bit of unique information that you won't necessarily get very easily elsewhere. And related to that, Gamers Nexus has had a website for quite a while now. Also very clean, very helpful, very informational. A bunch of benchmarks, obviously compilations of all of their information that they do in their videos. It's awesome that these larger tech YouTubers are making websites, compiling their information, putting it out there, making it as accessible as possible because you don't necessarily always want to watch a video. So it's nice to have a written version of it. Anyways, that's it for tech news, at least at the moment. There's a ton of stuff going on, kind of some pretty crazy stuff with Intel and their CPUs and then a bunch of nice little additions like the websites showing up. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Scott of Tech Expose, thanks.